Three-point lighting is a very commonly used lighting technique for all kinds of visual media, such as film, video, photography, and even digital imaging. The point is to illuminate a subject in an attractive way. It is a simple but very flexible and versatile concept. If you understand three-point lighting, then you're well on your way to being able to use light effectively in any kind of visual media. To accomplish the look of three-point lighting, you need a subject, a camera to shoot it with, and three lights. Each light has its own role and is placed in an optimal location to achieve its purpose. Let's look at the lights from a bird's eye view. You can see the three lights are directed at the subject, two on either side of the camera and one coming at a diagonal from the back. The key light is the main light source, as you might be able to tell from this diagram. The back and the fill lights help frame the subject and fill in the shadows. Here we are back behind the camera looking at the subject. Identify the key light, the fill light, and the backlight. In this tutorial, we'll explore each one of these light sources individually and talk about what they can accomplish when used together. We'll start with the key light. As you recall from our bird's eye diagram, it comes at an angle from either side of the camera. It has the greatest impact on the subject and defines the overall lighting design of the scene. As you might suspect, it also casts the strongest shadows. Some shadow is usually desirable because it helps give the subject some depth. In this example, we can tell our subject is not a circle, but rather a sphere because of the shadows created by the key light. Often key lights are located at a high angle above the subject, such as in this example. This is to simulate main light sources in the real world, like the sun. It may seem like at this point, no other lights are necessary. The key light is the most dominant light source, but it's very unusual for it to be the only light source. You'll understand why by the end of this tutorial. Let's move on to the fill light. The fill light is on the opposite side of the camera, and as you can see, is much more dim than the key. It is used to soften the shadows of the key light and to lessen the contrast of the subject. The amount of desired shadow or contrast can be adjusted by changing the luminosity of the fill light. The brighter the fill light, the less shadow. By itself, it's not that impressive, but when combined with the key light, it creates a much fuller image. Now, let's turn off our key and fill lights and focus on the backlight. The backlight should not be directly behind the subject as the camera is looking. This should only be done by experts that are going for a specific look. Uh, typically, it's off to the side, directly across from the key light, but it can also be across from the fill light. The backlight can range in a luminosity from fairly dim to very intense. It doesn't compete with the key light because it's behind the object. In this case, it's fairly dim, but it does an important job of framing the object, adding depth, and separating it from the background. Sometimes the backlight is referred to a rim light because of how it outlines the object. You can really see this when the backlight is intense and placed for a dramatic effect, such as in this photograph. The backlight in real life, as opposed to digital imaging, is typically much more noticeable because of hair and clothes and other fuzzies. In our example, which was created digitally, the edges are smooth and so less of the backlight is caught. There is also less of a need for a lot of backlight unless the object gets lost in the background. If the object stands out from its surroundings, then a strong backlight is not really necessary. Regardless, the backlight isn't all that useful until it's combined with the key light and fill light if desired, depending on how dramatic you want that contrast. To review, the key light illuminates the subject and does the most to define the scene. The fill light softens the shadows from the key light. The backlight illuminates the edge of the subject adding definition and depth with subtle highlights. Three-point lighting combines three light sources to create an attractive visual scene. It also provides a certain amount of flexibility. 
now that you understand the concept, you can play with the lights, move them around to get different looks. There is no one best arrangement. As the situation and the desired mood change, so will your lights. However, some things will stay constant. You will always have a key light. You will use a fill light to soften the shadows if you want. And a backlight will help you define the object. Another guarantee, armed with this knowledge, your scenes will look better, no matter what visual media you're working with.